name's John Clifford, and today I'm going to be working with Jitai. And I wanted to introduce Mr. Sato, our famous visitor from Japan, and briefly talk about what we're going to be doing today on his hair. Um, as you can see, Mr. Sato has a lot of texture in his hair already. It's a very kind of curly pattern, has some wave to it, which is somewhat unusual for Asian hair. Um, he has a lot of outgrowth on the sides. So what we're planning on doing today is we're going to be taking the Jatai shears and doing shear over comb, taking the sides down on both sides. Also, as we work into the back, we're going to be taking the shortness down, leaving some length in the middle that we're going to be texturizing later with the razor. And also, then we move on to the top, we're going to be texturing the top with the razor getting lots of different lengths and texture running through this so we can make nice different shapes. Okay, so now we're about to begin with Mr. Sato's haircut and you'll see a great transformation with this. What we're gonna be doing first is planning out our haircut, which to me is the foundation of all haircuts. You have to have a plan and you have to have a foundation to build a building. If we don't do this, we have a system that is gonna collapse on us. It's a very advanced technique just to go in straight razor cutting with no format, no plan, and I wouldn't recommend it personally until you have quite a few years in the business. At this point, what we're gonna be doing to Mr. Sato's hair is we're gonna be starting on the sides, doing shear over comb, like I said earlier, and work our way gradually into the back. We're gonna leave him a bit of point in the back so that we can texture this so that he doesn't just look like He's got the usual run of the mill, short haircut with length on top. Something a little bit more creative and something a bit more up to date and modern. So, like I said, we're gonna be starting on the side. We've already applied a little bit of blade glide to the hair, which is gonna help me get my comb and shears through the hair. The benefits of blade glide are the fact that it has provitamin B5, which is also known as panthenol. Um, it tends to plump the hair shaft a little bit and helps the razor work through or the razor blade or the shear blade. I tend to use it on all my haircuts, whether I'm using sear, shears, sorry, razors, even sometimes on the neck if I'm using an edger clipper, it also helps to keep the skin soft and supple and not get any reaction. Okay, so we're gonna be starting at the sideburn area and just gradually work the comb up and move into the back. The thing that we need to concentrate on when we're using shear over comb is we're only going to be using a small part of the comb. Lots of people make the mistake of traveling up and down the comb with the shears. The bad thing that this creates is it's going to make lines for you within the haircut. So we want to focus on a small part of the comb and keep a constant up and down motion with the shears so that we're not creating any drastic lines. So what we're going to be doing is starting off in the sideburn area and we're going to be slowly scissor over comb all the way up until the area that I decide I want to leave a weight line where the texture is going to begin with the razor. Initially we're going to go through one time and take off the weight and gradually go further and further and further and closer into the hair until I get the look that I'm trying to achieve. So we'll start off very basically in his sideburn area making sure that we stay on the same piece of the comb and we're not making any lines in the hair. The closer we want it, the tighter we hold the comb to the scalp. As you notice, as I'm progressing up the head, I'm gonna to start to put a bit of angle in the comb and then pull the comb away from the scalp. This is to maintain more length up in the parietal ridge area so that we don't follow the roundness of the head too much and then it gets very pointy looking from the front. So again, back to the foundation, we have to plan this out before we start we have to have an effective plan to create the result that we're looking for. Working through the hair slowly, just to check the result that you get as we work through. We're not rushing anything, we're just going into the hair and waiting for it to speak to us, to tell us that it looks nice, to say yes, that's what we're looking for. Again, we're also dealing with hair growth around the hairline, another thing we have to pay attention to when we're forming our plan for the foundation of the haircut. Because he has a strong hair growth back here. I'm gonna comb this slightly forward and cut the hair out of its position so that when it goes back, it creates a softer line and blends in with the rest of the hair. People have many problems also with shear over comb around the ear area. So we wanna hold the ear out of the way 
and cut the hair around the ear so that we don't remove his ear. Most people don't like that. Again, you can see strong hair growth this way. We're going to come out of its position, cut it, and then let it fall back. Again, detailing around the perimeter, very important. We want a nice clean look. After we finish the shear over comb and most of the texture on top of the haircut, I'm going to be going through with the nape razor, cleaning up his sideburn area and cleaning up the nape around his neck. Again, we're using multiple tools. Jatai has multiple tools to create the whole look for you. We're going to use multiple tools on this haircut because that's what it requires. You can't do everything with just one tool. That's why Jatai has many tools to get the job done. Again, holding the ear out of the way, protect his ear so that we're not damaging our client. And another thing that's really important about doing shear over comb when you're going through a haircut like this, particularly on strong Asian textured hair, is that we need to step back and take a look. If you constantly focus on your work, looking at it very, very detailed in one spot, you don't see the whole picture. The whole picture is what's important because that's what the client sees. Now again, as we move into the back, we can see that his hair growth is very strong growing forward. If I were to cut this directly up and down, it's not going to be as effective as if I go against the hair growth. We need to go opposite the way that the hair is growing to get a perfect look. So we can see that it's very strong that way, so we'll go in the opposite direction. The other thing that's also important when you're doing any type of haircut really is you have to make your work easily accessible to you. The client just wants a very good haircut. They're not so concerned about the body position they're in, they want a very good result. <coughs> if we need to move the head away from us to get a better result, that's what I'm going to do. It helps me do a good job. That's what I'm looking for. We're starting to go through. I'm liking the result that I'm getting off the shear over the comb in the beginning. So we're just going to add some shorter pieces in the front using the fine tooth of the comb so that we can take this down a bit further and give it a bit more dimension. Again, making sure that you have lots of detail. We want this to be a very nice finished job. No loose ends, very tidy. I'm just going to turn them around a little bit more so that I can start to reach the back area. This, I'm going to have to hold this ear a little bit because I don't want it flipping back into the area I'm working because clients don't like to be cut. That will send a client away from your chair very quickly. The other thing that we need to pay attention to when shear over comb on the nape is the actual body structure and the muscles involved in the neck to help you do your work. If we just keep the client sitting straight up, his skin is very loose here and I can pinch it. It's not helping me pick up this air much. If I tilt him a little bit, I can make the surface very hard by utilizing the muscles in the body. This makes the hair then stick out from the scalp so that it makes it a lot easier for me to cut. Again, using the body to help you do a good job. Use the client's body and use your own body to achieve the desired look. You can still see that he has a lot of strong growth here, so I'm just going to keep going over that area until I'm very happy with it.
And now again, working back into the nape area. Like I said earlier, it's important to stand back and look at your work. Particularly when doing shear over comb, we need to stand back and see if we can see shadows. Right now I'm seeing a darker area here. To me, darker means longer. So I'm going to go in, look at that area, find out what needs to be fixed, and get it so that it matches and blends in with the rest of the areas around it. Just by taking that little bit of weight out, it changes the look. Okay, making sure we're detailing around the ears. No loose ends. Professional job. Okay, now we're going to be turning him in around so that we can look at the back and we can decide where we're going to be putting our length in. We have to decide a position that we want the longer part that's going to be textured to sit. Obviously we have lots of things to take into account. We have the occipital bone on his head and we also have the symmetry of his head. We don't want to make a nice long area through the top and then completely drop this off asymmetrical. If that's what the client desired, sure, by all means. But on this particular haircut, what we've discussed already, we're going for a fairly central textured piece down the middle of this haircut. So planning my haircut back to the foundation of doing your haircuts and planning them out in the head, I'm figuring that this is the area that I want to maintain length. So I'm going to work up to that line with the shear over comb and maintain the shortness up to that point. Now just as I said earlier about utilizing the client's neck muscles to help you work through this area, we also have to think about what the haircut's going to look like when they're walking down the street. If they're holding their head up in a normal position, we don't want to see ridges and wrinkles. So again, we cut the hair in one position, then we return the hair to its natural state to finish the work and finish the detailing. Now you can see through here I've got a few lines which obviously was created from stretching out his neck muscles but as we go back we're going to have to correct those to get the desired look. Okay, so as we're working through with these shears here we're just making sure that we're getting a good transition from the shorter to the longer. Now I'm going to take a minute here to talk about the feather switchblade shears. The biggest problem I've had with shears in the past is that they're always absolutely fabulous when you get them back from the sharpener. Um, usually a month to two months you start to know the edge, notice the edge going away. Um, we all know how much sharpening costs nowadays and the fact that we also have to give our shears away for a little bit is not super convenient. The thing that's absolutely wonderful about the feather switchblade shears is number one they come in multiple lengths. They go from 4.5 up to 7.5. The thing that's incredible about these shears is whenever they start to feel dull, they're not cutting how you want them, you can just change the blades. You don't have to lose your shears for a little while. You don't have to get a loaner pair. You can just say, oh, they're not quite right. Take them in the back. Quickly take your blades off. Change a blade, put a new blade on, and you're back in business within seconds. You don't have to deal with any of that other stuff of not having your favorite shears because these can be your favorite shears forever. So now that I've got most of this side done, I'm not too worried about the nape area here because we're going to go back through with the nape razor and clean that up afterwards and then also probably add a bit of texture in with the shears. But I'm just working through this area to make sure that we stop at the weight line where we desired. Now I'm going to be moving on to the other side to replicate the same thing and make sure that these even on both sides because we like that. <laughs> 